Put the lime in the coconut, steer it all up. Put the lime in the coconut, makes you feel better. Lime in the coconut, steer it all up. Lime in the coconut, makes you feel better with breakfast. Breakfast with Bob. Pacho Man! I'm a round of applause for our man, Pacho Man. We are at Breakfast with Bob, presented by EA Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca, Tanya Puda, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch, our guest representing Canada. Yeah, we got a Canadian contingent here, Mr. Jeff Simons. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, Matt. It is great to be here. <laughs> I love having a steeplechase guy in the house. That's awesome. And oh, you got the uh, you got your Canadian flag going. Blue Jays play tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be great. I think it's big things for Canada in the sports world right now. So we're uh, we're hitting hard, and we're gonna do well on Saturday. Grew up in Penticton, and the home of the Ironman Canada for years and years and years was was Ironman and triathlon something that was always in the back of your head, or was it something that's like those other crazy people can do that? Uh, I think it absolutely is. I think when you grow up with it and you see it and. Uh, you just believe that you can do it. Right. I think every kid in Penticton grows up and, uh, you know, it's not you want to do it. You know, you're like, I want to get to that finish line. But I think just deep down, like, you know the stories and you have this belief. And it's right. pretty cool um, to have grown up there and just to uh, to kind of have that deep rooted in me and just the passion for the sport. When did, when did you do your first one? Uh, so I did my first, we had a little kids race. And so I was probably about... Uh, 10 or 11 and they did uh, I think the bike first and then took a break a swim and a run and my brother did it and uh, he's probably watching Mike but uh, but we did the swim and I was a little bit better swimmer than him he's yeah. older and uh, but I was swimming he's right beside me and I looked over and all he was doing was he was, he was shallow so he was walking and he was Oh, he was walking moving his arms, and I called him out, and I was like, you're cheating, and he just said, shut up, and dunked me under the water, so, but. <laughs> that was I your think, first triathlon experience. I think so, yeah, but I think all those lumps and bumps just make you tougher as you grow up, right, so. When did you get to the point where you felt like, okay, this sport is more than just a hobby, it's something I want to take more seriously? Uh, I think, well, I put the sport on the back burner for a while, and, um, you know, just when you're in an Ironman town, there's so many people to guide you in that passion, and I got hooked on cross-country running and, yes. uh, and steeplechase. And let's talk steeple, because I love the steeple. People talk about, uh, people don't know what the toughest events are in track and field, but there's no question, steeple is the toughest event in track and field. And there's, there's a lot of carnage in the, in the, in the jump. Uh, you've got solid hurdles. It's not like, the, like when people run the hurdles and the hurdles fall down. Your hurdles don't fall down. Oh, they hit back. They hit back for sure. And it, it is pandemonium, even like, uh, you know, even for the best in the world and a nice, yes. you know, race that goes well, it's still just carnage. And that's what makes it beautiful. That's what people want to watch. You know, they, yes. uh, you know, when my friends, they're not saying, okay, well, well we want to see you at the finish line. They're like, we're going to watch at the water jump. And if something happens, that's, that's, that's cool too. What's yeah. the worst thing you saw at the water jump? Uh, I think just when people get fully submerged, you know, I think they, uh, and it's always, um, <laughs> you know, we're talking about this on your show, but uh, it's those people that didn't give the steeple credit. You know, some right. of the, the milers or the, uh, the 5K guys are a bit more finesse and uh, they thought, you know what, I can step in there. I'm a bit just more free jump to it. foot. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, just, I'll just go over it and, uh, you know, they slip or they, they stutter right before that. They get a little scared and, uh, and then they flip over and they go completely underwater and you can, uh, we had one guy, I'm, I'm imagining him in my brain right now and he got out of the water like a drowned rat, but we watched it on uh, TV later. We were winding it slow motion, and there's one frame where it looked like the water was perfectly calm. You didn't see him at no, all. He not was at underwater. He's somewhere under there. I don't know if he's swimming or what, but. Uh, and the best part yeah. is, after they're underwater, then there's people jumping on him with spikes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're, uh, <laughs> and they're almost like, okay, this is sweet. I don't have to jump as far. I'll get a nice little, little spring off. Something right? to spring off of. I love that. Yeah. So, you did steeplechase for how long? Um, I guess it'd be a few years or, uh, there's about four years. My last year of high school, I really got into it. Yeah. And then there's about three years in university or two, I think two years, um, until I did my first triathlon. But then, and, then it was steeples behind me and I'm going to go try. Oh, absolutely. And it, it kind of came up, uh, there's all these tri geeks in Penticton and they're like, oh, you can never do an Ironman. It's too hard. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do a triathlon just to show these people. It's not as epic as they say. It's not as tough. And you know, as soon as I did it, I was hooked. I was like, this is as epic as they say. And, uh, and was that a, not a full Ironman? Uh, no, it was Olympic distance. Okay. And, uh, and I never looked back and it was always, you know, it was my goal to, to do the Ironman. I mean, that's, that's what I wanted to do. What was your first Ironman? First Ironman was in uh, Los Cabos, Mexico. Okay, well, that's not a bad place to go for a Canadian boy. No, no, it was nice. It was in March, and it was, uh, yeah, it was hot, so it was quite like here. And uh, But you were still an age grouper at that point. Uh, no, no, I was a, You're pro right a pro. Professional at that time, yep. 
So yeah. you were like right, you, you jumped right into the fire. Uh, yeah, well, we tried to tried to temper the expectations a bit, but um, but yeah, just threw myself in the fire and uh, yeah, just ended How'd up you do? a good race. Uh, I ended up fourth place. Fourth place so. in your first pro Ironman. Yeah, and I took down, uh, I passed Mike Twelziak in a, well, I call it a sprint finish, but it was about 500 meters to go. So in an Ironman, that's about as... That's as about as sprint as you can get. Sprint as you that's can get. That's where the steeple comes in. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, I just remember hitting that line and I was just completely completely destroyed and then I was like that was epic but uh I'll never want to do this again and how long what was your next one uh well that was the beauty was it, it was a few months later but the beauty of this Ironman is you have a short memory right yes. so you know I went from saying I never want to do this again to about 20 minutes later saying yeah that wasn't so bad and I think that night I was like sign me up like get me on a plane let's do this all over again right and so, what was that next one next one was uh the challenge in penticton so it was my hometown race and uh yeah it was just um it's probably as cool as i'm ever gonna get because it was a dream come true i was uh, chris mccormick was there uh so we had a great field first time doing a challenge race in north america and uh and i was in the lead i got a lead on the bike you know it's just a dream race and all of a sudden i crashed and uh, I was coming down this hill, it's, um, it's just the first descent, yeah. first big descent after you've done all the climbing. So I've got 150 Ks in my legs. I'm a bit tired, you're not thinking straight. So I went to just shake out my legs and see how they felt. Just started this wobble and I just, I just went nasty and I lost it. And, um, and I hit the ground uh, really hard. And um, luckily we have technologies and Garmin's. And so I was able to look at the data later and uh, it told me I was going 60.6 uh, .6 kilometers per hour when I hit the deck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh what'd you break uh well luckily i didn't break anything i just wow. had but i had a ton of road rash like the photos afterwards were pretty nasty but um and i thought my day was over and i did but i didn't really want to inspect the injuries i just knew everything was stinging and it was bad and so i went over to my bike um and it was kind of almost looking for an easy out, thinking, oh, okay, I'm done. the bike is going to be toast and I won't be able to continue. But the way I skidded out, the bike just slid. So it ended up, um, it sheared, like the handlebars were pretty sheared. I probably lost about uh, about half an inch off the pedals and, and the seat. <laughs> but, uh, but functionally, the bike was all right. Uh, so I put the chain back on and, and it was kind of this moment where I was like, well, I don't really have a reason not to continue. Oh, you gotta go. So, and so I just got on the bike and, you know, I'm covered in blood and, and my hips are hurting bad. But uh, I think growing up in an Ironman town, I just met so many people that um, whose journeys I got to experience, you know, like there's Chris and my fiance are even yeah. sitting here and just knowing what it means to people to finish this race. Right. And so at that point, I was like, you know, I can't even imagine myself running right now, but I'm just going to finish this race even if I got to walk it. Right. And, um, and so, yeah, so I got, it hurt. Uh, my arms were all ripped up, so arrow bars were quite painful. But, uh, you know, I got to the end of the bike, and, and someone saw me and said, uh, oh, you're smiling at the end of the bike, though. And I said, oh, yeah, I was just really happy to get off that bike. Exactly. I just ditch this, this freaking thing. And so I get in transition, and, um, and uh, this might be a long story, but this is kind no, of no, no, sums me up in a nutshell. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. So, um, it's, and there's it's always called getting around. ugly. This yeah, is getting oh, ugly. It was real ugly that day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there are all these people around me, and um, then medical people, and they're all want to. They're looking at you, and it, it's looking pretty rough. And they're saying, "Oh, well, let's get you over to the med tent. Let's let's uh, let's get you checked out." And I knew that if I took that, I wouldn't be getting back there. Right. It would just be. Um, you just just once you're there, it's hard to get that conviction to get going. And so at that moment, I needed that conviction. And um and I looked at the the lady and I apologized to her afterwards, but I looked at her and I said a curse word, which normally Canadians don't do, but I said- Never, I've <laughs> never heard a Canadian curse I person. said, uh, no, I'm getting out and I'm winning this beeping race. Winning and not just that's, finishing. That's what I said, I was in the lead. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it done. And I So think, you were still leading after crashing and everything. Yeah, I was. And, uh, and luckily the way the course worked is the guys couldn't see me for the first, there was a bit of a loop at the start, so they couldn't see how painful it was. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't check, but I knew it was bad because, uh, A, because every time I grabbed a gel, my hand was just ripped to shreds because my fingers had uh, <laughs> blistered and ripped apart. So I couldn't grab things. And the worst part was I couldn't give kids high fives with that hand. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but anyway, so I'm running by and I'm hearing people cheering for me and getting excited and saying, oh, looking good. And then they thought I was out of earshot and they're going, Oh, did you see the road rash? And I'm kind of like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm still I can here. still hear. Yeah, here. So my I, ears still work. Yeah, and I'm still not knowing if I can finish this thing, and my hips hurting, but it was just kind of one foot in front of the other. And um, but the magical thing is, um, it kind of works worked like um, uh, when you're trying to sleep. 
And you know when you've got like a sound that you can't really tune out? Right. Or, but if, it, or if it's like a constant sound though, you can, it tunes out? Yeah. And I kind of accepted that I'm in a world of pain. Like this is going to hurt a lot, but you know, it's all right. I'm, I'm not going to die. I'm going to make it to the finish line. And uh, it's just one foot in front of the other and the miles ticked away. And then the next thing you know, I was able to, to make it to the finish line. And win. And win the race. So. And, and then you won it the next year. Uh, and then one at the next, but I didn't crash the next year. Oh, that's so. good. So how, what were your injuries when you, when you finally had yourself assessed? Was it um, primarily road rash? Well, it was road rash everywhere, but it was just the impact on the hips. Yes. So luckily nothing broke, but it was just, um, just some pretty severe trauma. And it took me about, um, I guess my next Ironman was, uh, the next good race I was able to complete was, uh, Ironman Canada, which would have been, I think 11 months later. So uh, and was, that was uh, in Whistler. Uh, yeah. Yep. And so we're talking 2014? Yeah, in 2014. And so, so you ran a 240 there? Uh, yep. Yep, a 240. So it was. That's it, it pretty went sweet. pretty well. So. Yeah. Marino was ahead of me on the bike and I yeah. couldn't quite catch him. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And, and you know, there's something um, cool about these races where, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you win. Um, or how you do, it's almost more what you overcome to get there. Right. That really makes them special. And so that one, coming off the injuries, it just, it was really special for me. Winning challenge, uh, Penticton, you know, in your hometown, that has to be a highlight. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you know, just to get there covered in blood and, and have your family there and everyone. And nobody wanted to touch you. you. Yeah. Uh, well, did, well, the worst was that they gave me um, some champagne. Oh, and like, spray this. And I was like, all right. And I think carbonated alcohol is the worst thing to get. On open room, wounds. But, yeah, yeah, that's not really. Now this year. Yep. This year's Iron, going good. Ironman Asia Pacific champion. And you run a 245 off the bike. That is, that's the real deal. Yeah. And you're talking was, about, uh, heat and all, the, all that type of stuff yeah it was cool and just uh just the way that race played out to have a battle i was uh neck and neck with tim burkle for uh for about nine or ten kilometers and uh that's fun huh oh it really was and i'm, I'm thinking as we're running it's like ah this is mark like craig and alexander dave, and craig yeah, around yeah, on this course yeah and then mark and dave and yeah. i didn't want to compare myself to those guys because i haven't been to hawaii yet but uh but it, it was really cool so and, talk uh, about being here for the first time you're your type of guy enthusiastic guy who probably the history the feeling that all, all the greats have raced here and now you're able to follow that oh it, it's cool you can just feel the energy from the island and uh you know we took a, a photo with the peter reed sign down by the pier and uh yeah it's just just to follow in that legacy and hopefully uh you know with brent and lionel and uh you and know, yourself, uh, <laughs> Heather Wirtel. Yeah, We've got here. Angela's here. Yes, so, Angela uh, and Nath. It's been a lot of Canadians. Yeah, I think we can build on that legacy, and if not this year, it's going to be. Uh, we're going to keep coming back for the next decade. So. Have you spent much time on this course? Uh, yep. Yeah, I've been here since uh, September fourth. Oh my God! Yeah, so I've, you're I feel, a native. I feel almost like a local, so I, I can almost say aloha without feeling weird. And so, what, what's your impressions of? Does this course suit you? Uh, yeah, because it's tough. It is hard. I think um, it's it's mentally tough. You know the heat, the wind. Um, it's just you know it's just gonna take that fortitude and uh, character. I think that's my. It's a character, right? Yeah. Getting ugly. Did that come from that crash? Uh, it started a bit before that, but I think that just amplified it. And I think uh, it's just kind of cool that that crash was like a, a a moment that we can really talk about and we can really kind of snapshot. But I think everybody has that moment um, when they're out there. It might not be the crash, but everybody has that moment where things aren't going wrong or they're like fighting those fears and those doubts in their yeah. mind. And, and they have to find that kind of conviction and fortitude to push through it and say, no, I want this more than the pain. And uh, so it's kind of cool that I have that story and, and also my saying, get ugly, to, uh, you know, to kind of relate and uh, to hopefully get people to be pushing new boundaries and pushing hard. I think you might be the first steeplechase guy to win this race. Ah, that would be cool. That'd be cool. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, let's not get carried away. What but, What are uh, your goals? What are you thinking? Ah, uh, well, we said this before, but for me, it's it's more just about what I'm putting in, and um, yeah. And if I'm that guy in the morning, where you guys are saying that guy that was just hurting and just looked like he was giving it everything he's got, yes. if I'm that guy you're talking about Sunday, regardless if I'm uh, finishing at midnight or I'm finishing first, you know I'm going to be a happy man. So love it's, that. It's really just all about. For me, just racing is an opportunity for me to, uh, to figure out how tough I am and to kind of have those competitors out there pushing you to hopefully find something and a new level of like toughness or badassness that I might not have known was, uh, was inside here. I so. love it. 
Jeff, thank you so much for being with us. Jeff Simon's been a guest. How about a round of applause? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we are presented by ES Sports Nutrition, Cliff Bar, Timex, Roca Tanya Pura Resort, Rudy Project, Slow Twitch, and welcome back, our man Pancho Man. Call me in the morning, tell me what to do. Call me in the morning and tell me what to do. It's breakfast. Breakfast with Bob. Pancho Man! Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Woo!